I his microphone. Yep. Hey, you're live. I remember this was off the top. <laughs> Are we All ready? right. Are we live? <laughs> yes. Welcome. So this is is more of a working meeting, but um, you know it, it probably wouldn't traditionally. It's it's not a super formal meeting because it's a work meeting. But um, why don't we go ahead and we could have a an inspirational thought and and maybe the pledge of allegiance. I'll go ahead and give the inspirational thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll give a prayer. <laughs> Dear Father in heaven, we're grateful for the opportunity to be gathered as a RAP tax um, committee designated by our mayor and city council to represent the residents of Santa Quinn. We're grateful for um, these residents and their time and, and effort to um, allocate funds that benefit the lives of so many residents. We're so grateful for their efforts and their time. Bless us this evening as we review last year's projects that we can um, have thy spirit with us. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Is there someone who would like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, my hat off <laughs> Sure, I'll, I'll lead. Please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So... We've got a few new faces in this group. Um, we now have council member Dave Hathaway. So Dave, we, we welcome you. <laughs> and quite frankly, I, I think, if I remember correctly, Hattie, didn't Nick used to lead the meetings? Um, as a council member? Or was it Kyle? I couldn't remember <laughs> on the rap text. I think it was Kyle, so I'm <laughs> jumping ahead. So I'll finish just introducing. We got a couple new faces and then turn the time over to Kyle for the rest okay. of the agenda. Do you have that? Yes. I apologize. It's again where we just meet like every five, I know. <laughs> every nine months with this, this group. I'm like, uh, uh how's this one? But yeah. um, so we still have on, on the board uh, Sarah Jorgensen, Sarah Olson, Kim Barr, Kyle Vincent is. Um, our community services um, chair. chair, and hence the chair for this group as well, and our new member, Dallin Briggs. Dallin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, been in Santa Quinn for two years now, little, I guess, two years and a month. Um, we moved from Ivan City, which is southern Utah. Um, kind of came from the same position that John's in, uh, worked for cities for 10 years. Um, so kind of done his side of the rap tax and, uh, just excited to be here and serve. So help out where I can. Awesome. And I would add too that Dallin's got a lot of background in, in parks yes. as well. Um, we always, I ask him questions all the time on different things, but it's great having someone that has been in that capacity in other cities and lives in our back door, just up here in <laughs> Summit Ridge, right? Yep. And coaches kids and so forth. So. Glad to have you as part of this group. I think we have a very well-balanced group when it comes to likes and and um, programs and hobbies and all different types of things like that. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, my the first item on the agenda is uh, approving the meeting minutes uh, from our, our last meeting, which was on May 13th, uh, 2021. Um, and I'm... My guess is that uh, have any of you had a chance to look at those minutes? Because I have not. But uh, we need to approve the minutes. <laughs> so, um, and, and I think that the, to just really, kind of I think that what the minutes are really was was this chart up on the the wall here is yeah, basically, basically just approving going from yeah. requests of one hundred thirty seven thousand down to we have fifty eight thousand. Yes. So I think that would be a, an appropriate thing to just look at and. Okay. That's that's what was the result of the meeting. Could could you possibly zoom in on that a little bit? I mean, maybe yeah. others' eyes are a little bit younger and easier have a right. easier time seeing that. But it's right. Same one right there. Oh, it's right here. Paper. Okay, well yeah. there we go. Thank you for being prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so we went through the requested applications and is is that all we did last time? Was we just talked about them? 
right? And and we rec- and, and made recommendations. We yeah. did make recommendations, yeah. yep. but we didn't actually decide on and vote on what we wanted to do, did we? We did. We oh, did so that was yeah. I, that we we, the we did it all in one meeting. We have so the ability, if we need to, to yeah. do multiple meetings, but I think we were able to do that all in one meeting. That's yeah. what I thought, because that's what I was asking you. I said, "Is this that meeting?" And you said, "No, it's not that meeting." Oh, I apologize. <laughs> it's not the one where we, this one's not the one we're going to decide, but the May one. The one that you're approving yeah. on was that one. That was the main yeah. one. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. I am going to get with it in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> do I have an, appro- uh, an a motion to approve the meeting minutes? I move to approve. <laughs> thank you. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second it. Okay. okay. Thank you. It was, it was <laughs> seconded by seconds. Sarah. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the minutes stand approved. Okay. So let's move into new business uh, review. Uh, the... New project status, uh, 2021-22, the stuff that we decided on before, is that right? The yes. Yes. See kind of where things are. So is that, did I turn so, back to you here? You betcha. But okay. before I do that, um, Dave, I want to just give you an opportunity. Um, Dave is now the city council liaison with our community services department. Um, events like the rodeo and rap tax. Dave, while I'm pulling up this next um, thing to put on the screen, is there anything that you want to share with the group? I Down's new, and we had him tell about ourselves. We all kind of know who you are being a city council member, but do you want to say any words to this group? Uh, I, it, it'll be a learning process for me also, I guess. <laughs> uh, um, I, do have a, I do have a lot of admiration for, for what goes on here, and I think there's a lot of good things that can come out of it. Um, I think the citizens of San Quinn will only benefit from the work that this group does. So uh, I'm looking forward to new uh, new things and, and see where we can go. Thank you. Cool. Appreciate that. And and Dave is so supportive. We appreciate his willingness to be part of all these different committees and, sure. and show us support. So what we're going to do is the colored copy that's, well, it's got some colored pictures stapled. That's the one we're going to be reviewing. And it's really kind of an update. So just a reminder that RAP tax funds that are, recommended by this group every May. They go to city council for review and approval um, in June, and they're available July 1st with our regular city budget. And so projects are, some of these are still ongoing. They can use the money all the way up to June 30th, or the money just goes back into the wrap tax pot, and we can then re-utilize the money if it's not used. Most of the time it's used. Um, So the very first item, and, and again, most of these projects um, are Santa Quint City projects because to apply for these, you need to be either a Santa Quint City, you have to be a government entity or a nonprofit. And at the end, we do have one nonprofit that we'll review as well. And and we welcome more nonprofits. The, the rule is that they have to be active in this area to compete. So uh, a nonprofit that's working just in Salt Lake wouldn't be able to apply for Santa Quin, um money. Um, So the first one is our summer in the park. We've actually done this two years in a row, and you're not going to believe me when I share that the the numbers, the participation numbers are exactly the same for art in the park as they are for summer in the park. Now the difference is art in the park is more arts and crafts, and the summer in the park is games, where we're actually out on the grass and doing different things, give kids treats. Um, And it's not necessarily that it's the exact same kids that do both, but... I double-checked the numbers and looked at the participation. I'm like, they're not going to believe me because they're exactly the same. <laughs> exactly. But they are exactly the same. <laughs> so the, f- the first year that we did this in 2020, we had a 94 participants. This year, in June, we had 192 just summer in the park. Plus, um, art in the park had 192. Sometimes parents sign them up for both, and that could be why they're the same, but not always. Um and then in July, we did kind of a combination hybrid where we, instead of uh, a full um, two hours of games, we actually combined it where one hour was art and one hour was just because July is a little bit busier for our staff as we get ready for Orchard Days. And we had another 104. So 192 plus 192 plus 104 mm-hmm. is your total for 2021 with those two programs. That's pretty cool. So. That's a pretty good investment, I think, for the money. Um, the thousand dollars mainly goes for actual product. Um, we c- we could use it for staffing, but usually it's it kind of goes toward 
on the sports side, we actually bought um, nine square, all the plastic stuff for nine square, which is pretty expensive, and we made our own. And now we we can pull it out at any city celebration or teen activity or youth event, and we can play nine square. That's the great big um, PVC pipe that's mm-hmm. got the nine holes that you've probably seen, and they hit the ball up. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> even more money when you buy it online. So we actually save money making our own. Um, you can see here, I, I didn't actually take a picture of that but we bought some more cornhole boards that you can see there with the money so the thousand dollars has pretty well been spent up for again it starts july goes all the way till june and so we'll the city will just continue the program we'll continue to make sure that happens during the month of june this year art in the park did not use all their money on arts and craft supplies and so we're going to be able to use some more money for new and exciting projects this coming june so um, by the end of June, money should be spent on that 1000 for summer in the park and 1000 for art in the park. Okay. So a little, couple pictures there. Any questions on those two? Okay. Were these uh, the pictures, are these up on uh, <coughs> Summer Ridge at the park there? S- that, that, that was the one that I took the most pictures. Yeah. Yeah, okay. where you've got the, the sky view. Um, we, we rotate around with those programs where there's different days where we oh, use right. Centennial Park, East Park, Orchard Cove to the north, the Summit, um, Trail. Summit Sunset Trails in Summit Ridge. And then we also this year, we, we shifted away from, actually we shifted from East Park to um, Orchard Hills Elementary more on the, the southeast side just because we thought maybe we would have more participation than the north northeast side, and we actually did. There's not a pavilion over there, but it seemed like there was a better attendance on that side. So we, we kind of like going to East Park when we do it on that side of town because there's a pavilion and there's a bathroom. Um, okay. Granted, we do have a concession stand with the bathroom, so we have access to, to that over there. So we'll continue to develop that. As we build more parks, too, we like to, with those programs, um, spread out the joy and try to do them in the neighborhoods where people live okay. so um let's see let's go ahead and scroll to concerts in the park um this one we've spent about half of the money in the summer of 2021 and we still have about half the money available that we can do more concerts in summer before july 1st and so i anticipate as you anticipate us using the rest of that money that three thousand dollars um did any of you by chance get to attend any of the concerts that we did yeah, okay great. <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah, fun we, huh we went to most of them <clears throat> they were they were really fun yeah you know it, it was it was great i wish there was a few more people there of course but but still just the 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 kind of environment the the feel the food trucks and the the uh the farmer's market going on at the same time it was really fun and i I liked it i I think there's some plans to do some combination again like that with the the chamber and their market Mm -hmm. um hometown market i believe they call it Mm -hmm. where that's on monday evenings but it makes sense to to do a concert when you've already got people there and food and Mm -hmm. it's just more of a festive yeah one thing can i if i can comment about that i don't know if, if this is the right place to do that but it uh, I think the the one downside that I really saw with it is that there's just no stage. There's <laughs> nowhere for people to perform, and I I just wish that there was something. And I I had some ideas of something that could be done uh, with that space that, to make it a little bit better. But I mean, it definitely would take funds <laughs> to do that. So, but I, you know, just somewhere that that, that is like more an obvious place for somebody to perform. So along those lines, one of the things that is, is in preliminary stages is our, our new Parks and Recreation Master Plan update. And one of the things that we will be bringing to some city council and various steering committees and community services board, et cetera, is some review, draft review, what that looks like. One of the potential ideas is the park at city center behind city hall mm-hmm. is to actually put an actual stage facility there in the middle where people have the grass and then you could do concerts and movies and it's really like you said it's a built-in space that's for that yeah oh, that'd be so, so that's nice. that's something that's on the horizon that 
is not approved but could be a good location whereas we we've talked at uh, Centennial's pretty crowded right Sarah we've talked about how many things we cram in Centennial we keep adding new things there and 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 it's a great space but that city center space might be a great option for uh, I don't know if you've been to Richfield City or Payson new city yeah. Center, right? yeah like Richfield on that City. grass behind there yeah that again I don't know how long that would take to develop but what if you were to put I guess Petite Meat's got a little stage mm -hmm. if you were to actually put something like that that's a little stage there and people sit on the grass you that's an option you know it'd be fun I don't know if you've been to the the uh, Shakespeare Festival down in Cedar City Oh, but yes. they have uh, where they do what's called the green show. It's just kind of like a pre-show for before the people go to the big shows in the theater. But they have a, a, a small stage, and then they just have a grassy area in front that actually has like a mound all the way around. The grass just kind of goes up, and so it's just kind of a, a natural amphitheater like setting. Like the rodeo grounds? Yeah, like the rodeo grounds, except for it's, a, it's mm -hmm. round. You know, or at least it's like a, a pie shape, you know. So, so it can accommodate a lot of people, but it's just meant for sitting on the ground and just enjoying it more naturally. Mm. It's really nice. And That's a great e wouldn't example. Wouldn't a ton of structure, so it's kind of nice. So for this year, um, did, did you guys get to see, I guess we did some on grass, and then I think Andrew Gowdy brought a trailer in mm -hmm. for some. Um, some were standing on the tennis or the basketball court. Or course some on the court. We, we kind of did a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, do we have some type of a connection with elementary school to borrow their stage? I know that's what we've done. In a couple like at Santa Quinn Elementary or which one? Yeah, so some oh. of the elementary oh. schools have a stage that they set up. Um, it's portable. Like you take it apart. You have to have your parks guys or somebody move it. But um, it's just we like would, a, yeah, it's just yeah. a breakdown stage. You've seen it in yeah, schools. Seen them. Yeah. Um, that we would borrow. <coughs> that might be an option. If we have Get them off the ground, but it looks like it's a stage yeah. versus yeah. a trailer. <laughs> yeah, I know Mount Nebo Middle School over in and Payson has that that yeah. we, we used when I was there. Okay. But, but yeah, okay. I was thinking something like that too. Like you know, I don't know how much that would cost, but just to, for the city to buy something like that, if we didn't want to have a permanent structure, but we could have I, a stage that we could. Set I can up also for research person. something for with utilizing rap tax money as a potential idea of maybe buying something that we could use that would then be movable and multiple. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we'll look into that. So. Yeah, and I stage. think, like, it may not have been as well attended as we'd hoped, but it's just a matter of time. Because mm -hmm. even, like, the last concert, people are like, what? Like, they had no idea about it. But <laughs> it was, like, a really good whole community, family, fun event where Payson has their band concert every Sunday. And have been love, for years and years. Yeah. yeah so. Like, for Santa Quinn. So I think, yeah. We're we coming can, along. Yeah. Like, Kay. we can figure out how to just make it a little better and... Yep. Do you like having those on the same day as the, the market mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when yeah. possible where there's other things going on too? And okay. Yeah. And I think it's mutually beneficial. Okay. So. Great feedback. Thank you. Um, let's jump into movies in the park. This looks like a lot of money. We actually invested in our own equipment. We have our own screen, our own projector, everything. All we have to do now is when we have movies in the park was we have to pay for the licensing to show it in a public venue. And so we, we can usually budget money for, for that as part of our events. And so by doing that one-time purchase really helped us, and now we can do multiple movies a year. So that's pretty cool. Any questions on the movie movie in the park? I don't think it's... Those licenses are costly. They are. <laughs> You're like, we really need to. <laughs> when you do it in the public, it's probably best to just do that. Um, cultural arts. This money has, has been utilized just a little bit. Um, we have a portion of this going toward the art festival. And we've got a portion of it going to a, another, a second mural arts class that Kyle's leading. We actually have 11 class members. We've mm -hmm. just been contacting mm -hmm. them today. Different ages from oh, yeah. like 14 to... To 58? I would like love to do it. If oh, I really? had like unlimited yeah. time, I would totally do it. Yeah. It sounds like so much fun, and all the ones around town are beautiful. Thank yeah. you. We're, we're excited. This one, it looks like it is going to be on the uh, side of Ivanov's there oh, on Main good. Street. So we're really excited to, to create something new. So. Yeah. so utilizing, again, cultural arts money. I think with Rap Tax kicking in some money for cultural arts, it's really really given um, some traction and, and helping after a couple of years. So 
that's where we're out there. I Again, I anticipate utilizing that money all by the end of, of June. If not, it'll just go back into the fund. Um, this was kind of cool with the museum. You're going to look at this left picture here. Is Oh, go ahead, Can Sarah. Can I just ask Sorry. a question? So on the cultural arts with the painting, you're saying that you still have some money left to finish this other project. Um, oh, let me go back up. I'm sorry. Um, for cultural arts? Yeah. So the money that we've earmarked right now yeah. is mural art uh -huh. and art festival. Um, oh. when, those, the, the, uh, when those two things are done, we might have some of that $5,000 left to oh. go towards something else um, related to cultural arts. Oh, okay. But they'll both be finished before June. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so if you've got additional ideas on things that we can do before then, our, our kind of our, our thought is not knowing exactly how much the art festival is going to be this first year. Mm -hmm. We've kind of set a budget, but as we move along, things add and go and, and move so okay. forth. Okay. So good question. Thank you. Um, the Chieftain Museum, we talked about getting some uniform display cases. And as, as we worked over there with the museum staff, Annette and Katie, we realized that we would be able to do kind of a couple things with this money is yes some uniform display cases but along the same veins they have a room up there that they've been kind of cleaning up to make it the art room and um, Kyle actually brought his class and demonstrated art last spring mm -hmm. and is going to do it again in April so what they've done is they started pulling off the carpet on the walls and we mm -hmm. found oh, all kinds of surprises oh really I've got <laughs> pictures of the old brick and oh. and just it was kind of a, a project so we had they had someone come in and actually put in some white um, some sheetrock to cover that space and then now that's not it's been patched in that room and then they've got an actual painter that's been over there this week and so that art room is going to be cleaned up and refreshed it's up toward the top and so a little fresh paint goes a long ways with yeah. the smell there but the, <laughs> the other thing that's really cool is we were able to get some of these wire if you've seen these little wire things that that yeah. hang pictures mm -hmm. so that when Kyle takes his class over there or, or other people have an art show we're planning some additional ones throughout the year at the museum that we will have these little wire things to hold all the pictures so that's, again great use great. of some rap yeah. tax money supporting that facility and um, we'll get pictures of the uniform case in the military room when it's completed as well so cool. okay Again, jump in if you have questions or, okay, or if I'm missing something, Hattie, jump in too, okay. Um, we've got, so the Parks Department has, um, there was a lot of projects with money going toward that this year, and the first one, um, $5,600 went towards six new picnic tables, and they look really good there at Centennial. If you look at the old ones compared to the new ones, you're going to go, whoa, wow, <laughs> yeah. they look pretty good. Um that is something that, that talking with Brian, our park supervisor, that he would like to each year with the wrap tax make a recommendation that we kind of keep adding some new new tables because it just benefits people year-round through the rentals and, and the events. I believe, I'm, I want to say that there's like 12 more tables that are, are older there. So it might just, again, be a gradual replacement of tables but the, they look really good so if you're over there you can check those out that was kind of our that was our plan right when we allocated that money we were just gonna kind of replace a phased a few approach a year and yeah. yeah okay and 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 again the city replaces equipment as they're able to as well in regular budgets so there's a lot of different parks so i think the goal was specifically at centennial where you have all these festivals and events and orchard days to kind of start there um, fence replacement is just a lot of the fencing around the ball fields, baseball fields, and they've actually just started that. It just keeps snowing, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. every week. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin knows how that is, starting a project. Well, actually, you were in Ivan's, so it was just sunny all the time. Murray City was the same way. Okay. Um, so what they actually did is the one ball field, they actually took down the fence and put the holes in, so they're ready to actually put in a nice, going from a four-foot fence that was kind of beat up to a six-foot. And then at Callaway Field, they're actually um, going to be taking some of the fence out, putting in new fence that's tighter um, as well, and, and some mow strips too, where it's going to be really nice, grass was growing up and so forth. Um, we found that the 
the amount that we wanted to go out and and hire people was too expensive and so they're actually saving quite a bit of money by just doing it in-house it's just taking a little bit more time based on their winter projects so again money should be utilized uh, by the end there I think a good cause the volleyball pits um, they've ordered new poles that one is just in line to be done a little bit later this spring so the idea there is new poles get rid of the old sand really clean it up and, and beautify that area Centennial looks really good. If you've been there recently, you notice that they got rid of the horseshoe pit and they put in a cornhole, cement cornhole. Oh. So those that love horseshoes are probably going to throw something at me, just hopefully not a horseshoe. But I admit we were a little upset when we first saw it. We're like, oh, were you? <laughs> yeah, because we love to play horseshoes there. But uh, like, we, we need to find another place, though, honestly, to, to yeah. put some to horseshoes where people can still do that. And we still do it at, at Orchard Days, but... People can actually check out for free cornhole stuff and, and just go over to the park if they want. Um, this is one that we wanted to, to bring back to this group is we had a lot of discussion about putting some sort of fence at Theodore Allen Park up on the bluff between the playground. And the more that we've just witnessed that, we just really feel like it's kind of unnecessary. And so right now we put a hold on that $6,000 fence. We looked at Gabion with stones and, and so forth. It's just so far from the water, and there's not people up there frequently enough. If you eventually put a pavilion up there and you've got groups up there and picnicking and so forth, but right now it's more disc golf and fishing. Um, I think the playground is still cool, and I think people still use it a little bit. It'll be used more in the future. One of the things we wanted to propose to this group well, we have a couple options. Is one we just let the money sit till July. The second option is is Mayor Olson has really been pushing um, a new vision with what's called Prospector View Park. It's a new trailhead up Santa Quin Canyon, and we've been writing some grants and things that money doesn't come until like July. New budget money doesn't come to July, but he's he's moving forward on this project and got a lot of things donated. We're talking about trail access to miles and miles of mountain biking and so forth up up the canyon hmm. initially before july we could actually utilize some money buying some shovels um paying for you know the rental of a uh, porta potty and some different things like that to get us to july where we have new monies would this group um be interested in considering shifting this six thousand dollars to that project so tell me where it is so up up that's right you live on canyon road Right up from where you live, up the canyon, um, the city actually owns about 120 acres up the canyon. Mm -hmm. So up the canyon, I don't know exactly if it's a mile or two, on the left side there, there's a, a kind of a flat area, and we're going to be making a trailhead there parking lot. And part of the grant we're seeking is to actually put a waterless toilet mm -hmm. vault there. Um, and then on both sides of the, the road, we would actually be doing bike, bike trails. So um, miles and miles of connectivity, developing bike trails that one would go all the way north to the future Gray Cliffs development. And then on the south side, wrapping around and eventually dropping over to Theodore Allen Park, where we have the pond on, what's that canyon, ro that road? Pole Canyon. Pole Canyon Road. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. still learning all the names. So there's, Mayor's been working all winter on connectivity and and working with the the forest service and getting a lot of approvals even looking at developing a bridge that crosses the river there mm -hmm. and there's a beautiful 1.7 mile stretch right from there that goes right along the river too so okay. and it's so it's for bikes well mountain biking hiking, hiking walking okay. it's it's multi-use um but not um four wheelers or right this would be non-motorized okay yep is this uh, is this further up the canyon where the current roadblocks are? No, it's actually road before road that. Before it's that. before okay. it's blocked off, and and I, they are working on that as a separate project. Hopefully, that's going to be opened up soon, right, Dave? <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for the the federal government on that, but I hope so. So so that one has got a lot of of steam. A lot of um, we've talked to the Nebo Mountain. I think they're called the Nebo Goats Mountain Biking Club. They're five high schools in southern Utah County, 200 riders. They've offered to send their youth to come help build the trail. We've got people that have helped build Four Bay. 
Sarah, I should be having you tell the group about this. Oh. Sarah as, as, uh, is helping us kind of coord- – will, will help us with volunteer coordination. Um, we've got people who have designed trails before that are going to help design, like, legit trails. Sarah, what else do you want to add to this potential project? <laughs> you know, it's, it's exciting because it's um, kind of spread out both sides up the canyon, go up on the bench, like we said, up to that north development down the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. And just so there's lots of opportunities with trail connecting and a lot of ways to get extra grant money to, um, it's not gonna be anything that's gonna be expensive. Just, um, there'll be just a lot of volunteers and just getting a park in there. But if you've ever been up to Four Bay in Payson, it's kind of like somewhere like that, well, multiple trails and they'll kind of cross. Um, but more spread out and more open more flowy and people that you know have done this before experience and there'll be signs and mapped out and it would you know have an opportunity there's a lot of people that are into that area that are traveling up park city eagle mountain cedar city park city corner canyon like it's kind of a destination place that would bring people here that could use their tax funds here but not yeah, I don't know. Just kind of like a little destination place, but kind of nice up the canyon. Just and 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 the project is really moving forward. Um, engineering department's been marking out GIS the area, and then they'll be marking different trails here as soon as the snow leaves. So the project is moving forward as as funds allow. And so that would that would be just the thought is we were looking at this the other day. I was talking with Brian, and he's like, you know, we're not going to do that fence, and we got discussing well, we probably really don't even need it. Um, and so there's six thousand dollars that is approved to be used this fiscal year that we don't need to wait till July. It's something that would need to be approved by city council. But um, I haven't even brought this up to Dave yet. The potential of using that money. But other thoughts. So with this, <clears throat> the money it sounds like it would mostly go to purchasing some equipment that would be used. But a lot of it, the trails are going to be. It sounds like it's going to be made by volunteers who just want to go up and. And shovel and no, just we would we would have trail, actual or? we would do volunteer days where it's coordinated. We do a safety training talk. We provide the equipment in most parts. Um, we won't we don't want people just up there randomly digging. Right, we'll give yeah. them direction and it'll be marked out spaces. And we'll have some we've got again some people that helped with four bay and also people that helped with some trails up by Draper that are going to help help us actually plan and guide the design of it. So it will systematically invite volunteers not just that group but local residents that want to help as well Mm -hmm. there's local sarah knows a lot of local cyclists that would be interested in sarah knows more and sarah too (laughs) sarah sarah Um, but it would be um, i assume they're going to be just dirt trails they're not paved correct and that's that's the cost savings yes once you get into pavement and that's that would be the ones closer to town in the future but these would just be dirt trails to the mountains hiking or biking See, or walking. That sounds great. I but, love it. but people are excited about that because they do travel to different places. To have something local here mm-hmm. that they can great. stay here is exciting to them. So people are like totally volunteering. It's not like you're gonna having a hard time finding people to come mm-hmm. help. And people that are, you know, experienced too. So it's really cool. I think just, you know, the the main funds is just bathrooms, maybe little benches picnic tables and 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 again we're i'm uh, right now it's due in a week but the state of utah has an outdoor rec grant that we'd be approaching for again the restroom and additional things so whatever this money could go toward would be great now um but if it doesn't get used by july when it goes back into the fund the rap tax fund and then ideally come july we have our, our regular city budget and then we have this grant that would kick in if we get it that we could then really move forward so this money if we were to use it would just go towards shovels whatever we need right now again potentially even just re- renting a porta potty for a, a couple months while people are up there before we can get the, the grant would actually pay for the actual solid restroom that would be up there um some you know we could use it towards some food items for volunteers and um one of the things they might do before the grant comes is actually start working on that bridge. I'm not quite sure the timeline on that one. We've got some power poles donated that we're going to use to kind of build our own bridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, 
Norm and John Lindell, they're actually doing the engineering on it. So there's some cool things happening, but we do need to buy stuff, not just the poles for the bridge, but we need to buy other pieces that would go along with mm -hmm. that. But again, it's, it's how quickly do you move? Do we wait till July or do we use some mon money that's not been utilized toward that? Would you feel comfortable, Kyle, having a vote on something like that? Yeah. I, um, so. I have one question. Mm -hmm. Like, I are there things that we had um, that we couldn't give money to that we talked about last year that maybe, I mean, I think this is great, you know, okay. but I also like building up the parks in town and and are the pickleball courts you know what's happening there and so can you bring up a good point why, why don't i finish going through this list let's go through everything that was funded and then okay. we'll go back and put up the one that was from last year and then we can have that discussion if okay. that's a good point i'm jumping ahead right in the middle of the the page here good points kim thank you so right here um we actually set aside some money for a potential walking path around Centennial Park. Um, it's not currently in the master plan. It's something that's being will be reviewed in the current master plan. Um, there is some things that need to happen with a walking path, whether it's, um, you know, are we going to do curb and gutter around Centennial Park? Um, we use it currently for parking for the rodeo and things like that. So that's just something that we'll need to keep in mind as with those dollars. Um, this group can set money aside for potential things and we can try to keep it going as this group comes and goes it's it's hard to say that that money is is earmarked in five six seven years for something that might be a hundred thousand dollars so keep that in mind but in good faith I, I think sarah you led us in that good charge last year that that money was set aside so there is twelve thousand dollars that wasn't used that's that's back into the pot that could be used for something like that and then the very last project that we put money toward was the lily pad project, $2,000. The initial request for sewing machines, um, they had requested 5000 And the committee gave 2000 So they used available funds to teach craft skills instead of buying a lot of um, different sewing machines to perform services in the community. Um, as you kind of read over that, looks like they had some events at at some different events that they did at the park, some different church groups that made some items. Um, Mountain Ebel Middle School sixth grade day of service, and then individual appointments. So you can see that they made hundreds of different products that that benefited um, families that have uh, had stillborn and miscarried babies. Is, is what their nonprofit so so that is the update of the funds so most of the money with exception of that one project was actually utilized yeah. and so in this paper it shows every application that was requested mm -hmm. and we actually approved every single one of them we just changed some of the amounts mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so everybody that had applied last year got something okay. so I yeah I feel comfortable not I think the more I it. think the bulk of the money that wasn't approved was just extra money for additional picnic tables. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to do double the money for the fence that we're not doing at all. Um, the walking trail around Centennial Park it was estimated to be about seventy five thousand in in total, and I think oh. we set aside twelve thousand. Yeah. And then yeah. the fences, the chain link fencing was going to be ten thousand versus seventy five hundred. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everything yeah. else was funded. It was nice to. I was. I remember being very happy that we could fund pretty much everything, at least mm -hmm. most things in full, and only a couple were less. So that's yeah. nice. And and one of the things that we try to do too is a balance between the arts, parks. Mm -hmm. um, this coming year, we're going to have more money. Um, we'll get a, a a final number. We're going to have at least eighty thousand awesome. this year, where we've been at fifty eight. And so as money keeps coming in, it's it's exciting to see as that that grows. And then it's already 
almost a hundred thousand years. Yeah, what before you know it, it can be. That's totally enough to do a trail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yep. So again, we'll get you guys involved as we look at the the master plan for that space as well. But yeah, it just shows you that you guys can do great things in and representing the residents. How many people um, were benefited in our city by the things that were approved just last year? You can. Yeah. Um, I guess rhetorical question there, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you're like, well, I don't know exactly, but <laughs> quite quite a few. Yeah. So that so that kind of goes back to that discussion, Kim, um, Kyle. I'll kind of turn it back to you as far as if there's any other discussion. If you want to um, have a vote on utilizing that money and and go from that point. Well, is there any more discussion that we want to have on it as far as any any other thoughts along those lines of like reasons why we would not want to use that. The funds for that, or or is everyone comfortable with maybe just yeah, having a vote on? Okay, we could do that. Um, so, uh, how would I go about that? Uh, a motion? Uh, yeah, I guess would someone would make a motion to utilize the money and a second, and then all in favor, and then. Oh, oh, yeah, just oh. the consensus. So we don't need to actually do a motion along the lines, or we can just decide it? Just talk amongst yourselves, but it's, it's just a work group. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a formal that we're filming it, but it's it's considered a work work meeting. Okay. So not, not, I guess the May one is the, the formal one, but right. um, is so that something the city council could still make, they could still talk about? Okay, very good. So it sounds like in general, general consensus that that would be a direction yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the part that you're really excited for, and this is where all of your ideas, we want to hear your thoughts about upcoming projects. Sarah's got her hand up. Okay, and it's not a trail. <laughs> 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 Throw them out. Um, we so, we're going to have a new city building that is huge, and there's going to be a, I haven't looked at the plan, but from what I understand, there's a, Senior Citizen Center, or like portion of it, that will be big enough to it'll host hold events yeah, like three hundred like people can be seated in there. Okay. So a big, big room for, and there'll be kitchen, a okay. deep kitchen for um, that they can cook each week, and then a, a warming kitchen for weddings and events and things oh. like that. Okay, and I know that there are performers that will come in for senior citizens. Then also with the youth performing arts thing that I'm starting, it would be so nice to not have the competition at an elementary school on an upright piano. I would Ooh, like to... an upright piano. I hmm. would like <laughs> to suggest that we get like at least a baby grand. And there are ways that we can get a used one. Um, I know I got a... Um, a thing in the mail for Covey Center of the Arts that they, mm -hmm. like this week, they're selling their rented pianos at reduced rates, and it's possible that we could do something like that. I know BYU does similar things, yeah. but mm -hmm. we could get a really good piano, and people could rent the thing out for events or for recitals mm -hmm. or other things, or we could use it for city things, concerts in the winter, um, I think it would be awesome and probably be like 10,000 or less, hopefully less. Okay. I don't know exactly how much it is. I haven't looked into actual prices, but even getting up towards 15,000, that's a, that's a brand new baby grand. Mm -hmm. You've got that beautiful space. It would be a great amenity, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. For sure. I love that idea. For I people like to that utilize. Idea. Okay. Good. Great. I've added yeah. to the, the list. Yeah. And the reason we're brainstorming, and, and you can send us things, the application process is the whole month of April. So if you think of ideas, again, a nonprofit submits it or our department submits it. So if you have ideas, feel free to reach out to me that you, you don't think about today, but you think about in the next month. Um, other thoughts? Yeah, Kim. Um, I, I have no idea how this would be approached, but it would sure be nice if our little community could have a rec center facility, either improve the existing one, expand it, put water upstairs. I guess you're looking at the big 
So the, and the new city built. hall basement will actually have five classrooms, and two of those mm -hmm. will actually have sinks in them. So a lot of the arts and crafts will shift from we've had to do things upstairs in that tiny little room. Mm -hmm. There'll be lot larger rooms where yeah. they'll be great for birthday parties and arts and craft um, classes. And um, the other thing, that being a teacher of the little toddler class, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of work for an old lady like me <laughs> to pull all that stuff out and you know and have to put it all away and just is there a room i guess the, the new if, the new if space I, will have if I will have, have a storage power, room right off of what it. the new what the the new spaces will have storage rooms so the, the, the new city at the new city hall basement we're but gonna you're have, not gonna put tumbling there are you well I, we we haven't decided all that oh. but just just <laughs> knowing that, that in general as yeah. many classes that fit over there, but oh, we understand what you're saying is, is whether it's a built-in storage or whether you have storage units, mm -hmm. someplace that you don't have to move things up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Well, up and down stairs or having to uh, roll out the carpet every week, you know. Yeah, uh, it's truly a multi-purpose building. And it's just, <laughs> anyway, okay. I, yeah, that, if mm. there was something we could put money towards to improve that i'd be all for it okay thank you perfect other thoughts i would i know we've talked a little bit about this but i would love to see a better more permanent way to advertise events and i know we've, we've <laughs> kind of talked through this if there's you know some kind of a Thing we've talked about like c coming up with like an electric uh, so why are you laughing <laughs> well it's, it's i know it's weird we, we, yeah we've talked about well. yeah but I, I i feel like that th that's something that could really really benefit <laughs> just because it seems like it's so hard to get the word out to people in a way for them to to actually get it and utilize it i mean so many things like if you just don't happen to check this thing then you don't see anything you know, and, and a lot of people like I, I don't even look at Facebook anymore, honestly. And so I don't see, you know, things like that. So I, I'm like, I don't know that there's a great way to reach everyone. But if there was a way that we could spend some of this money to make that possible, mm -hmm. I would love that. Okay. I, I think that's good, Thank too. You. I think the trouble with that is our town's kind of yeah got little pockets. And so you almost yeah. need four of them. Or at least three of them. Mm -hmm. That's true because a lot of people live up on <laughs> Summit Ridge and never go down Main Street. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we, we currently, when we do banners, we hit five or six different spots around yeah. town. And even then, it's hard to hit everyone, huh? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a unique challenge, but like something along the way of advertising yeah. and marketing. Permanent something. Like I don't know what, what other cities do. But well, uh, just the reason me and John was probably laughing is this subject is, is being talked about and beat i guess beat up <laughs> <laughs> the horse is dead some know? of the council and some of the staff has ideas or non-ideas my idea was and I, I was the one that kind of brought it up is that i would love to have an electronic sign mm. and my thought was is out out by the tower you know in front of the tower or oh yeah the, and then the staff thought maybe across the, over on the the trailer park side on that grass there but to me, uh, if, if there's enough, <laughs> I think enough people come into town to that red light, you could get enough information there. And between that information, and that seems to what spreads through town more than anything else. And I, I bring this up all the time because I, I tell the council that even though we do the newsletter, we have the website, I'd say 85% of the town is disengaged mm -hmm. with information. They're not, they're not getting it. I mean, and sad is, is it's there. It's just they're not going after it. They're not. Most people just live their lives, and they're not dealing with it. To me, I think of uh, the, the electronic sign is, uh, well, <laughs> it was my idea. I'd really like to put one out there just between the, the Santa Quinn welcome sign and the and the tower park, mm -hmm. right there, because you're going to pick up what thousands of people that come into to Santa Quinn every day. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and if it's like a rotating sign that like and you would, shows different yeah, things, you put, yeah, you'll yep. see it if, at yep. different times every time, and so you'll right. hopefully get the information, and that'll spread. Yes. Yeah. I think the tough thing is the cost, though. Like there are some that that are smaller and don't have right. as <clears throat> good of displays that are more affordable, but I don't know. How much is? Do we know how much like a big the one? The one that is in Nephi, I think I remember hearing it was like hundred thousand dollars. What? Oh, you're talking, but that's but like would, a, that's I don't, a, I don't know but that's anything. That's a billboard size. That's a billboard, that's a billboard okay. size. And then TV there was yeah. one that I heard of that was smaller that was like just from listening to city meetings. I don't know, but it was like ten thousand. But it wouldn't be big enough to really catch your eye, and it would be really. Um, the the process to, right now is there's people are looking at trying to look at the cost. I know Jeff Sidaway is looking at the cost, trying to find cost on. On a size and, and how much one would be, because mm -hmm. that has to be massive. I don't think it needs to be massive. I think even what uh, CCU down there, UUCC, that that's a nice sign, and it puts out a lot of information. Just in the time you drive past that, mm -hmm. you can see. So something. I don't know how much. And that's what I'm talking about, is something like that. Now I don't think you're looking at a lot of. Mm -hmm. I mean this. Well, I don't think you need a billboard, but right, like somewhere I mean. between that cost and, you know, <clears throat> like it could be really expensive and we could do something really awesome like a trail around something and have people look online at the city website. Okay, yeah. so I've, I've noted that idea. Thank you. Other ideas? Keep, keep throwing them out. They're great ideas. We appreciate you guys thinking of them and, and sharing those with us. What is the dollar amount of the... Uh um, funds that you can get from the Forest Service or that grant you were referring to applying for? Oh. What's the potential on that? So it's it would be about a $50,000 match. $50,000 match. Okay. So it's because the, the, the restroom is like 85000 Yeah. for mm. two. It's a waterless one. Gotcha. They're the big cement drop in the ground. Mm. So, I mean, you definitely could put some additional funds toward that project for the next year. Every one of these things that we funded last year, you could put money toward them again. You know, things like um, art, art festival, museum. I mean, there's you could definitely other special events. If you liked holidays and you want to see things ramped up, you could add more money to that. I would love like the concerts in the park. I think was really cool. Like I would Continue love to, to extend that money. or or do something figure out like something with the stage if we can't you know just something but i'd have to think is <laughs> but i really sure. loved that i think that was mm. kind of brings the community yeah. together yeah. did you say that there's a master plan that we're kind of waiting on it's to see what they're going to do still with that still area? still developing yes and so we can't really say well we want to we want to support uh what are those gazebos you know, stage gazebo or whatever. Um, yeah. We don't. We can't put money toward that because it's not in the plans yet. Well, it's 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 not. But either it was the trail <laughs> around the the one part too. So, oh, I mean, we can right. consider. Ultimately, um, if the money's not used, it sits in there, and then it can be used yeah. later, right? I, I was thinking <clears throat> something that would be doable that wouldn't be too expensive though would be just to pour a cement pad right there next to i know it's not an ideal location but those restrooms i know that's like a, that west facing wall that you could pour cement out from there that would be you know 15 feet square or something like that 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 could fit a band or you know some individuals on there and then Where, uh, throw some, which park so the centennial, centennial park so the the restrooms okay. that are there and I know it's not like a band wants to perform on the side of the restrooms. Well, but you could paint some curtains. That's what I was talking about. Like on the side of the restroom, you can paint something cool behind it and maybe throw something up to kind of shield it. So it's not like, hey, guys, this is a bathroom, you know, but it's still a functional building and provide a stage for for um, these groups to perform. Might be a okay. possibility. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I, I, I better, I guess it's probably time to kind of bring up to this group a little bit, but um, I've been working on for a lot of years now, but I've been working on a, a skate park. And that kind of is the corner where I want to put the skate park. 
in yeah. Centennial Park? In Centennial Park oh. in that corner. Oh, I love the idea of a skate park. <laughs> it's it's not set in stone. Yeah, it's just, just brainstorming park. ideas. Don't, don't yeah. some grass somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I skate parks are great. I've been a part of maintaining. I've been part of the building process of two skate parks. They are awesome. They're great. Um, we kind of look at the community, right? We want to have events and places that. Uh, different age groups can gather. One of those is our teenagers. You look at, just for me, for instance, right, I look across the street at Summit Trails, and you have the kids playing on the playground, but the teenagers are climbing on the building, and, you know, they, they get antsy. We want something for uh, for them to do. So the bike trail idea, going up the canyon, the skate park is, is fantastic. Um, so I would definitely yeah. be one in voting and holding off funds to support skate parks. I know they can be pricey, but... Yeah. If you've done them before, how do you know how much, like roughly? Uh, a year over three, four hundred thousand dollars. We're we're anticipating yeah. an we're, estimate around four hundred thousand. We're we're putting a we're putting a four hundred thousand on it, but I yeah. I, I mean, looking at some of the stuff me and John's looked at, I think we can get it yeah. probably down to around three hundred. Yeah, and I know I I've worked to talked with uh, over in uh, I forget his name Carl, uh, Timont. Over in Payson, I don't know if you know him, but the, mm -hmm. he deals with all the um, the skate park stuff there, and and they they've got a they've had quite a problem with the, the, the kids who are on that skate park creating a lot of vandalism and mm -hmm. and horrible things there, and they're you know at the point of wanting to shut it down because of that kind of behavior, and yeah. I mean you, you don't want to bring that necessarily to a place that little kids are playing, but at the same time. I you planned to drop my, yeah. my son off there and then said, and he said, actually, I'll, I'll go back home with you. Like, <laughs> even like some, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know what you mean. We've yeah, had skate parks that have had fences a... around them and we've had skate parks that have been open. The benefit of having a fence is <laughs> you, you hate to punish uh, all of the kids for one child's mistake of, you know, mm. making it dirty or mm. vandalism or something, um, but it helps them really police each other. Um, you have... Uh, Anyways, that's that's thought to have a fence around it, but skate parks are, are great. They're just right. just to but throw in a little more information, the reason I thought that was a good spot is one, there's the bathrooms there already, which saves a lot of money on building one somewhere that you'd have to put a bathroom into, because mm -hmm. that just throws the numbers way out of control. And then the other thing that I thought was is that skate park would have eyes on it all day from the rec guys sitting in the rec building there'd be eyes on it then at night you'd have the the people that live on down that way that would, i i just think that there would be it would be a little more less of that there because yeah, there's so. there's too many eyes on it does that make sense yeah it does the one in payson's kind of the way and it's situated well, it's payson's in a bank it in a, a yeah it's in a right. so okay okay i've got that one down too good ideas thanks dave uh it just be like a portion of money to be saved for a future time to use it or well and with the skate park usually it's about five thousand dollars to do all the conceptual drawings and they come into town and they meet with the different stakeholders and have the kids help come and then they give you some actual designs and then from there the next step is usually okay you've got the money grant funds whatever you've got to actually start doing the actual construction so it's a great one to get the you the younger kids involved in because they bring yeah. pictures they bring all sorts yeah. of stuff and say hey these yeah. are components we've built at other skate parks do you like it do you not like it yes no they vote on it they move yeah. it through it so so that so there could be kind of a phased approach there right with yeah. some money for design and then later on yeah. when when there's a little bit more for building mm -hmm. um let me throw out something that that we were just brainstorming have you seen our fun bus over at the the rec building the seniors actually they they pick people up for lunches and then they take them on field trips. And then we're going to actually use it a little bit for our teen escape club this summer as taking kids around different places too. But the potential of a couple thousand dollars to go toward a wrap that's fun and exciting that's got the city logo and, and talks a little bit about kind of a, a walking or driving billboard. Mm -hmm. um, just an idea. If you can put the wrap tax logo on there, then. Oh yes, <laughs> it, you would definitely you would. No, exactly. And any anything here, and we, we need to follow up on a couple projects, but everything that is funded here should have either the logo on it or 
a permanent signage and and i know on the disc golf we we have the actual rap tax logo mm -hmm. um from two years ago that was that was one i wanted to just throw out to you um there's always things you know new bleachers for orchard days or you know additional things that help with capacity you know a couple bleachers here a couple bleachers there a couple picnic tables here and there there's things like that as well as as the fun money that goes maybe toward um you know programs and events as well but I think we've had, um, we'll try to keep the meeting today under an hour, but you've given some good ideas. We'll open up the application with the exact amount of what we're going to have available. Again, I'm thinking it's going to be around 80000 come April 1st. It'll be open all month, and then we'll set up a meeting. Hattie will be reaching out to you all um, to set something up in May, and that'll be the meeting where we actually come together and bring all the ideas and, and try to rate them. And if we can do it all in one day, great. That's usually a longer meeting. I'll bring some food this next time for you. Um, so if we yeah. have any ideas that come up, we can go ahead just and just contact you. Me. Please okay. do, please do. And and I've noted all the ones you've talked about. And so what we do is basically just put together a you know picture and a cost estimate and and in every one of these ideas. So <clears throat> okay. the one one other thing I'll just throw out. Um, this is not something that we do often. Every year as we have our different sports, um, we buy new equipment. But as, as the cost is, keeps going up on equipment, new balls, new baseball is crazy expensive. And we don't even do football. <laughs> That's really expensive. We've tried to keep our costs low, and eventually we'll have to keep raising those fees to cover that. We thought it might be good every five years to bring to this group the idea of maybe contributing you know, $4,000 toward just equipment and we could buy new soccer balls and new you know do that every few years mm -hmm. um we we supplement that every year with our program we just to to continue to keep up with that it's getting pretty expensive so we thought again not something every year but maybe one time every few years to come to this group and say wow you could buy a lot of equipment that could benefit hundreds of kids um in every sport so that might be something you you might see in april as well so that's cool okay hattie anything else Okay, back to you, Kyle. Okay, so I guess we'll wait to hear on when the next meeting is, and uh, we will adjourn this meeting. Do I need to get a, 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 a second and then all that stuff? Not because it's, it's a work meeting? meeting? Okay, well, <laughs> I guess our meeting is adjourned then. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>